All right, you've written your program and the asynchronous code, but why is it so dang hard to debug? So join me in this mini series on asynchronous debugging with Isadora as we dive into async code, how to and how to debug it in Visual Studio on this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson. And joining me today, we are going to kick off a mini series on async code and why it's hard to debug and how we can debug that async code effectively. So joining me to do that today and help to help us out is Isadora Rodopoulos, who is an engineer on the Visual Studio debugging team. Hi, Isa. Hi, Leslie. <laughs> Hi, Leslie. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. So yeah, you know, debugging, it's always a challenge for pretty much any developer. And then once you throw async on top of it, it's yeah, definitely, definitely a real pain. It, it adds so much more complexity into whatever you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so can you tell us more about why exactly asynchronous code is both a blessing, but also a pain to debug in a lot of scenarios. Yes. Yes. So especially in Visual Studio, we have been going through this a lot, which is basically trying to find tools and ways to help uh, users basically to debug their async code. Because we don't want async to be a bad thing. We want to encourage everyone to do their code asynchronously because it has just so many adventures. Uh, but it also has an advantage that it becomes way harder to debug. And I, I actually brought a little something with me, which kind of illustrates uh, that point. And, and it's basically just something that we can just go through, um, which is just, as you mentioned, uh, why is async hard to debug? Why is async code hard to debug? And for this context, I will be using a little of C Sharp. So it's all async await. But let's just get going uh, with my example here. Sweet. OK, so uh, let's say that you're just starting plain and simple. You're a developer, and you're just starting another day of work. So your machine boots up, and that's that's your just day of work. But of course, as every day, you also have your favorite playlist. But that's not enough. You have a particular song that is just uh, stuck in your head. And you really want to know what kind of song that is, but you're not really sure. You just have an excerpt of the lyrics. And you really want to know what song that is. And you cannot start working until you find that song. But one good thing is that since you are a developer, there is a good way and simple way to handle that problem is that you can just start coding uh, something that will help you find that song. So let's say we are here in C Sharp, and we can just make a class, a playlist, and we have something that tries to find a song giving uh, lyrics, which is a string, and then something that just fetches the songs. And similar to that, we have the class song, which just fetch lyrics and then do a lyrics request. So for example, I, I can use something with Spotify. I can use the Genius API to get the lyrics. And this is all within that methods. And here, I'm starting very simple with this example. So we are not even using async or await or anything like that. We are mm -hmm. just starting with a very nice and simple implementation in C Sharp. So this is all synchronous. Looks good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so basically, yeah. So we have this try find song, and then we trying to fetch uh, the songs here, which basically calls within the playlist. So this is ba basically implementation inside playlist. And then you can see that we are basically trying to fetch the songs. So for each songs into whatever we were able to fetch, we will then fetch the lyrics. And then after fetching the lyrics, we would just compare and see if it has a text. And if it has the text, it's the song that it was stuck in my head. And then I'm able to just return it. And that's basically how I address my problem of finding this particular song. Um, so one thing that I can do from that is I can just start executing the code and checking out whatever that song is. And then I can just hit press and then you can see that lovely icon 
<laughs> which is basically <laughs> yes everyone loves it <laughs> we are frozen so uh we are not really sure we can't interact with anything but that's still cool because we are here at visual studio so we are able just to debug it through so we can open the debugger and attach to the process from my program and just see whatever happened here and it's a sync scenario so I should be able to just uh, open Visual Studio and then pause the app and then just open the call stack. And then if I look at the main thread, uh, it's very clear that it's stopped right there and the do lyrics request. And you can see that the do lyrics request uh, is implemented in song. And that was called from fetch lyrics because you can see in the call stack mm -hmm. as well. So it's very likely a hang somewhere when calling the API uh, for fetching the lyrics of the song. So we are not sure exactly why this happened, but this is a very, give us very strong clues as to what the problem is. But before even going further and actually trying to diagnose the bug, there is another thing we can do, which is basically just tweaking this a bit. So my problem was that my app was unresponsive. I couldn't do anything. So it was frozen and we are, were doomed. We couldn't interact with any component within that window. And basically we, we didn't have many clues. It was just, it would just crash. So one mm -hmm. thing that I can do here, I can use async await. Uh, and async await would allow us to keep the UI thread responsive. So we could still click the buttons and try to cancel operation or just recover, even though that is still loading it would give us just way more options into doing stuff and not actually block the whole thing. Right. So, and that's the beauty about async and why we should use it, right? Because uh, it yeah, provides some everything. responsiveness, even though there's stuff in the background going on. So Yeah, yeah, definitely. There is that. And then we can just do a bunch of songs at the same time. So I, I think it's a good step I had to go from this app. So let's just see what, what that looks like. Yeah. So uh, you can see here, we have the same method in sync, but there is a catch there. It's basically that I can just do this nice async and await. And you can see it was, it was very simple and very straightforward. I just ab added a couple of keywords and I even added the async suffix at the end of the method because that's a good practice. So we just changed the whole thing. And then it looks, it looks very straightforward yeah. And so it looks like, oh, okay. So that, that should be easy to debug as well because it's basically the same thing. It shouldn't have any other issues. But there is the thing, the catch uh, is that it, if you look at the compiler, it's basically what the compiler sees, it's something very different. So it's basically, it, it can even look overwhelming at first, <laughs> but, but that's fine. That's good because I'm here to help you. <laughs> <laughs> that it's not it's not as bad and it's it's actually a good thing that we understand that if we want to get better at actually implementing further async code yeah so yeah <laughs> so yeah async and await those are such great keywords i mean it does definitely make it simpler to implement async but yeah there's a lot happening under the hood from the looks of things yeah yeah, and we, and we have no idea, but that's the idea, right? Because it's syntax sugar. So it's a good thing yeah. that it looks very simple and easy until yeah. you have to debug it. <laughs> and then you, you see it's a nightmare. <laughs> yep. It's like, oh, okay. I knew there was a catch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so back to the code. Uh, so this is was all generated with Sharplab IO, which I also think it's a great tool. So if anyone wants to check it out, whatever happens, and the compiler actually does with your code, you can do it through this website. And okay, so let's just see it through. So you can find in the left, it's the thing that we are used to. It's the try and find song where we are just matching the lyrics. And then on the right, we have this very weird try find song async. And this is what the compiler actually sees. So you can see there is no async or await anywhere there. All that we are doing is we are returning a task and we have all this sort of other weirdness around it. So for example, uh, if you just look at the text variable, you can see that there is something in the left and also in the right, but it's it looks a bit different. Now it's a field from state machine. 
So we have this new type, which is this open brackets, try find song async. The, it's basically a, a state machine type that will get all the information in the implementation for try find song async. So another thing that you can see that it's similar, it's that we are returning a task. And then that's exactly what you're doing. We are returning the field from state machine, which is the task. So in order to understand this, uh, I think the next step is that we just look out from this method. It's not really what we want right now, but rather we just look at the state machine type and what does it actually contain? So you can see here that again, we have the field for text and we have the fields for all the local variables so we can recover the context from this. So you can see here that we have the same method in the left and then we have the text which we have seen before in the previous implementation for try find song async and right now we have it as a field uh, as well with playlist which is basically the this keyword and then we also have something interesting is that we have the awaiters so we do have two awaits in that method and then we have a field for each awaiter and you can see that these are actually called in the move next implementation as well and the move next is basically the main star of this show for this whole uh, field, it, for this whole state machine class. It's because it has the actual implementation for try find the song async. So we do iterate over each songs and then we do check for matching lyrics. So all it does is basically it breaks down into logical operations and just handles for you all the comp complexity around async await. But I understand that even looking here, it's still not clear whatever is happening and how does that translate exactly to what we are seeing on the left. Mm -hmm. So I have another way of showcasing that, that I can show you. Cool. So we can just do an exercise. So this we, we wouldn't do this at home because we don't need it, but we can just for the for learning sake. So let's see uh, if we can implement the thing in the left, but without using any async or await keywords, we are just allowed to use a uh, task and any task helpers that we have. So we can start with something such as uh, try finding song async. So it's the same signature. Right now, I don't even need the async suffix because it's not async anymore. All we are doing is returning a task. Mm -hmm. And then we are have to fetch the songs, of course. So we just uh, dispatch this task, which is basically going to fetch the songs. And then we are not waiting for that. We are just simply running it. So if we want to do something with the result, since we are not allowed to await for that, we have to use continue with. So as soon that so as soon as that task of songs uh, being retrieved are finished. We are going to iterate over each song inside a continue with. And then for each of those songs, we are basically going to fetch the lyrics. And then it's the same thing as before. We have to wait for those to be finished. So we do that with another continue with. So basically for each of the lyrics we find, we have to actually compare the text and see if that's what we were looking for. And then finally, we have to keep track of all these uh, matching lyrics exercise that we just did and then just store it somewhere so we can actually wait for that result. And then we have as well to just return the actual result, which is what we wanted in the first place. So we have a list of candidate songs. And then as soon as we finish fetching all the songs and as soon as we finish fetching the lyrics for each of those songs, we just added for the candidate songs uh, list, whatever we found that it was matching. And then we return just the first one. So we are still keeping it simple in that sense. So basically uh, we have this implementation. And if you are very familiar with async and await, use it every day, you can be even more nitpicky and argue that the thing on the right actually looks, would be more similar to the thing in the left here where we are actually just doing a when all for all of the songs asynchronously and just dispatching them. But just for simplicity's sake, I want to keep doing that way. So we just have something simple and something that is similar enough 
on the right. So I just want to do some parallels now so we can actually grasp whatever the thing on the right is different from the one in the left. So for example, uh, we have the fetch songs. We are still doing both of these fetch songs. Uh, you can see here. And then for each of those, we are basically, instead of the await, we are storing them on this task. And then as soon as that task is finished, we are just doing a continue with. Mm -hmm. And then similarly, we will just uh, look for each of the songs and then we will just fetch the lyrics. And again, we don't have an await here, but we do have continue with. So as soon as we have that result, we will just compare the lyrics for each of those. And then finally, after comparing that, we will just return the first one that we found. So that's the main idea that we have on this tune. And then there's even something that will help even further just to solid so solidify the whole thing. Sweet. So one thing is that the code on the left is like this big chunk. It, it looks like just a big chunk of code that is going to be executed right away. But that's what you have on sync scenario. On the async, what you have is at those boxes and the code is not linear anymore. It all works throughout callbacks or even if you are familiar with JavaScript, you can think of it as promises. So these are just uh, logical operations that are going to be executed in the future. So they don't exist in that thread. So that box, uh, basically, you will not see on the physical thread. It's just something that is going to be executed at some time. Um, so you have that chunk of operation, which is going to be executed as soon as fetch songs task is finished. And then you have to actually look through the lyrics as well. So that's another box that you're going to execute as one chunk of logical operation. And then we also have another one, which is actually just returning the result. So suddenly you have all these moving pieces that you have to keep track of uh, when you just want to find the song, but you, you have to await for each of those. And these will not just exist on the physical thread. They are going to exist sometime or maybe not at all, but they that can be a little tricky to work with. So now that I just show you some of the details around it, I just want to finally execute my code with async await and just see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so back to the example, I would just put the lyrics and just try to find the song. So before I had a freeze, but now hopefully things are different. And now you can see that instead That's a good of, sign. <laughs> yeah, it's progress. Instead of the just the loading, <laughs> yeah. we have a loading bar and you are able to, you're able to interact with your app, but you still don't have your song and that's a problem. So, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe so. So, but that's, that's good. That's fine. Because again, we know Visual Studio, so we can again, just pause and attach the process and just see what's going on. But now we are in the async world. So if you're doing this app, for example, I did in WPF. So I did an WPF app. And if you look and you just pause right at that hang and you open the main thread, you will see basically this call stack, which tells us absolutely nothing. It's just, <laughs> it's just a bunch of stuff. A lot of stuff. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> good luck. So, yeah. So, so it's not, it's not good. Like we are not really doing anything with this, but that's, there's still hope because we are on, again, we can open the parallel windows and just look for all the threads. So there must be some code in some thread that show us any sort of code that it's on that async logic. And then you can see all these threads that doesn't mean anything. Oof. Yep, so a lot going on. <laughs> it's, all, it's all WPR nothingness. <laughs> like it's, I, I can't really do anything. And if I want to be extra sure, I can just filter out all the external code and I just have this. <laughs> and I, it's like everything or nothing. Take, take your pick. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> basically I'm not, I'm not able to see anything because it doesn't exist in any thread, 
So if I if I didn't know any further, I wouldn't know how to debug this going forward. Uh, and if you remember the sync scenario, if you do the same thing and open the parallel stacks, that's what you see. So you have the same six as external code, but then you have the actual uh, requests being done to Genius, which are just fetching the lyrics. And it looks much nicer and we can actually do, oh, okay, so fetch lyrics is the problem. But we don't have that with the async. We just have this one little it's thing. disappeared. <laughs> yes. So, so that's just, we. how would we go further with this if we don't have the right tools? Right. <laughs> So, but and, sure, and I guess that's what we're going to talk about in future parts, right? Yes. So <laughs> we have this little nice thing, which in Visual Studio, you can open the parallel stacks, drop down tasks, and then you can actually see the tasks much more nicely. So you would actually have this view that you can see right here. And you can see that the fetch lyrics async is there and you're able to actually debug it through. And yeah, so in the in the following up, I just wanted to explain how exactly uh, we accomplish that, and then how you can do that in your Visual Studio as well with just some demo examples. Yeah, that is exciting. So it's nice to get a more in-depth look at why exactly asynchronous code is really hard to debug, especially in Visual Studio sometimes. So. It's like it helps with so many different kinds of scenarios, but at the same time, when it comes to trying to diagnose those issues, a lot of it is getting covered behind a magic wall. Yes. <laughs> the Visual Studio doesn't want you to see. Yes, and, and even even just looking at the parallel test window, you know, it can be a bit overwhelming. So that's what I'm hoping to just explaining a bit what we actually do can just clarify so all these make sense to you. Sweet. So um, next time, what are we gonna talk about? Specifically, I know we have some call stack things to look into. Yes. Awesome. Cool, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, definitely tune in next time. We're going to continue our journey into asynchronous code and async debugging specifically and determine some solutions to get to the bottom of those frustrations. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah. So until Thank you, then, Leslie. Yeah, thanks for being here, Isa. So if people want to learn more about async code and async debugging, where should they go? Oh, so if they want to learn more, so mm -hmm. I do have some links at, if we can share, like I can provide you yeah. a bunch of documentations and a bunch of blog posts or just uh, looking for Visual Studio documentation. And there's a lot of things. And just the just the Sharp Lab IO that I mentioned before, it's so interesting just seeing whatever happens under the scenes for C Sharp code. So I'll share that with you as well. Good stuff. So until next time, happy async coding. Bye-bye.